right so we are live um so we're just gonna wait for uh more people to come in and to those who uh like are joining today so okay the ticker just started uh my name is hamza and today we'll be having a speaker from unimas who's a senior lecturer uh, mr chua kiman but before we invite him in let's just wait for more people to come in and to those who are you know like uh, interested to know more um, just share it around because um, i believe like uh, there's a lot of people who are really keen to understand today's topic and um, i believe it's a very uh, interesting topic especially for uh, students and orang yang macam still figuring things out and i myself is actually very very keen on this because in a way like uh, you know you just recently graduated and you're like trying to figure out you know what kind of thing that you can do especially at times like this where everything is very volatile so hi evitio uh so we also have jasmine uh we have heineken as well wow yep you're my friend too cikgu nene thank you so much for coming in uh so let's help share the live stream today so that we can have more people to uh basically um you know get more takeaways from session kita hari tu so sesi kita very chill very relaxed uh if ada soalan ke apa-apa you can always um, comment it down below. Today has been a crazy day uh, for us in Tegas because we do have a lot of um, programs ongoing and this is actually my third life. And I believe like uh, Mr. Chua himself has also been going through a lot of like stream, you know, like online lectures and all these things. So if you are wondering what he has been doing, um, just, uh, you know, like invite more of your friends. We're gonna go live soon together with Mr. Chua. Uh, and then uh, to those who uh, just made it for today's uh, uh, live session, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, untuk yang si tahu, uh, this is called Hashtag Innovate Sarawak Speaker Series. It's basically a sharing session by passionate innovators, entrepreneurs, change makers and creatives alike to share their journey and experiences. So this is your chance to actually get to know all these very passionate people, very experienced people. And these people are very busy most of the time. So today, they're making their time to actually reach out to us, to actually engage with the community. So if kita ada apa-apa soalan, if kita orang interested to understand their thought process, or if you want to know like what are the resources, what are the tools that they're actually using, uh, do let us know. Uh, later on, I'm going to share a lot of like, um, uh, apa nama? like resources and tools, especially from our today's speakers, because uh, he does a lot of um, uh, sharing on his website as well as uh, in a way he's an educator as well so it's a great opportunity to have him here so now that we have around 90 people in uh, hello raven raven uh, good to see you again uh, right so i think uh, now that we have quite a good number of people let's move into our main session uh, so to those who baru baru join uh, do help me out and do help us out to share this session today because it's going to be a very interesting session, very chill session. And, um, you know, like maybe for some of us, it's going to be like that decision making that you might have not thought of before. So uh, again, to everyone, uh, welcome to our second episode of Hashtag Innovate Sarawak Speaker Series. My name is Hamza, the moderator of the day. And of course, with me today is our speaker, Mr. Chua Kiman. So before I invite him in, to those who just tuned in, uh, Hashtag Innovate Sarawak Speaker Series is a sharing session by passionate innovators, entrepreneurs, change makers, and creatives alike to share their journey and experiences throughout what they do. So let me just move to our screen today. So we have Mr. Chua on my, I believe it's going to be on your right or on your left, not so sure. Uh, so thank you so much, Mr. Chua, for joining hello. us today. Yeah, hello, Hamza. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. I, I know it's being so how's, how's everything on, on your end yeah so far so good it's, it's been you know it has been a very hectic week for me a non-stop uh session as well trying to cram everything within you know uh these few weeks just to get things done yeah okay so uh, i believe you are involved in the higher learning industry and you are a senior lecturer in Unimas. but maybe like can you start off with a a more in-depth, a quicker introduction of yourself to our audience so that they get to know about what you do. Yeah, um, thank, thank you uh, to Hamza as well as uh, uh, Tegas for inviting me for this uh, speaker session for the first time. Uh, I think it's my first experience 
with this uh, speaker series. But I'm a senior lecturer at University of Malaysia Sarawak, as indicated in the posters and you know the description. Um, my main field is, of course, in e-learning, um, in educational technology, in, in, in language and communication and all that. But apart from being a lecturer, I was, uh, I, I am, you know, still active in the startup uh, ecosystem, uh, you know, uh, helping a lot of uh, budding entrepreneurs uh, within the campus, especially to, to get their ideas, uh, turn their ideas into something practical, something, something useful for the society or community and all that. So I also have a lot of, uh, have a lot of uh, graduates in terms of preparing them for the uh, job market, especially developing their soft skills, uh, or some people call it essential skills. So, yeah, basically, that that's my job scope. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of lost you, uh, Hamza. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, yeah. I was muted there. For a bit okay so um it's interesting that right now you are in the higher learning industry because i believe like mm -hmm. you are in that place where you're observing a lot of change a lot of disruption especially in the education industry can and then recently as we were talking in the backstage just now you are seeing yeah. that uh, you know like schools are open and they closed again and open again and the same goes with like universities too and people are switching to e-learning yep. and um, students a lot have been complaining about how all this uh, things have been messing around with them, but yeah. um, uh, maybe like a quick opinion, like um, like what do you uh, why why do you think um, all of this is happening? Like especially like is it a bit too late that we're jumping into e-learning, or like is it like is early e-learning in a way like the solution of it all? So before we jump into the the, the session after this, um. You know, I, I wouldn't say it's like uh, something that we we really want it to happen, but we, uh, we, we, with the current condition that we have, um, you know, we have, we have, I wouldn't say no choice, but, uh, you know, this is one of the best way to deal with it uh, for the time being, uh, while we wait for the, for the real, you know, solution to, to kind of fade off this kind of situation uh, due to the COVID uh, pandemic and all that. But I, you can see a lot of, uh, you know, pro and cons with the online learning, e-learning and all that. But I think uh, as of now, things are coping uh, quite well for all, for all, not for teachers, for students. But somehow I think, uh, you know, we really, really need to ensure that we can move forward from here. Yeah. I'm not sure why my camera is flickering again, uh, you know, really, really <laughs> should, it's okay. Should, yeah. Yeah. Like this is the, like, like, Lecturers won't glitch if it's physical, right? So I guess uh, these are the the cons of like challenge. online, la. the yeah. challenge. Yes. Yeah. So sometimes it's not the solution. I mean, it's easier the fact that we don't need to be there physically, but yeah. all these like internet and all these things become a yeah. new a new challenge for a lot of us. So um, that also comes to the first question, la. Like since okay. we're talking about you know challenges and all these things with the world put on hold for the past one year you know, how have you seen the landscape of entrepreneurship and employment in malaysia change based on your own experience well um you know i, I was really observing from from the higher education point of view i would say or maybe education in general um but looking looking into what was happening uh previously uh, for the whole year since maybe March 2020 until now. Um, I think pre-COVID, we were already, you know, in, in a situation where the job market is not really, really that well, uh, you know, re not responding well to the global uh, uh, situation, I would say, as you as you might have read, because, you know, like like in 2019, our, our economic growth was actually about you know, were reduced to 4.3, you know, wasn't that good actually, but, you know, who knows, you know, things changes so fast to 2020, to, you know, make, made it worse in a way. <laughs> and then, you know, if you, if you see the change in the landscape of entrepreneurship and employment, I would say, uh, well, the negative side, of course, uh, during COVID, uh, a lot of people were uh, laid off, you know, uh, or switch job and all that. Uh, in critical industry, especially in tourism, in aviation, uh, these are the critical industries. Even in higher education, we see a lot of uh, uh, 
people re resisting you know entering higher education because maybe they need to get the uh, money first they, they don't want to go into higher education uh, that kind of situation but in terms of in terms of the general landscape of entrepreneurship and employment if you look at the bright side a lot of people are also venturing into businesses which are not really uh, a, a, th a thing before that you know before covid uh things like you know like what we're doing now you know uh, you see more and more uh, youth getting in touch to doing more content online uh, on youtube on facebook and even for educators they are developing a lot of things online so these are something new in in, in a way uh, they would be using to to generate uh, income uh, or to 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 be able to kind of embrace entrepreneurship from a different point of view, not the traditional way of brick and mortar, kind of like you have a, a shop and sell things. You see a lot of people selling things on Shopee as well, you know, all this, all this uh, channel, uh, e-commerce channels, uh, things like that. So yeah, uh, in a way, pre-COVID has its pro and cons, you know, and then the during COVID, I think more or less, trigger a different kind of perspective towards entrepreneurship and employment but of course the, still the critical thing is still the drop in employment i think we we realize that unemployment is is increasing uh, quite quite rapidly and i i was reading you know like in october 2020 the unemployment rate it was actually 4.9 is quite high compared to the usual three point something that we all normally get so i think but things are slowly recovering i can see and eh, with all the initiative by the government, you know, with the Punjana program and all that, things are slowly kicking, uh, you know, off to a better start. But fingers crossed, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen next. But uh, at least I think it, it trains us to be more resilient in dealing with a lot of, uh, uh, you know, economic uh, crisis or even the not just e e economically, but also in terms of our well-being as well. Again, our, our well-being is also quite quite disturbed or disrupted for for the past year and uh, i i myself felt it you know you felt ill more often <laughs> yeah. because of this uh, workload uh, you are not working from home you are living with work <laughs> as they call it some people say you're working from home but actually you're living with your work you know 24 <laughs> 7 uh, in, in a way so yeah that's my take on that question agreed agreed and i i especially agree on the fact that you know like um you know the fact that what what's happening right now is something that's very like unprecedented no one has ever thought that you know like something like this is like gonna damage like the whole world's economy and yeah. Yeah. i believe like whatever that the government is doing right now like yes it can help but at the same time i think uh, all of us should be taking a role into trying to help you know like dampen this whole thing because all these like grants and initiatives could only last for so long until yes, the day exactly. that we yeah, you, we, we, we somehow, you know, like, uh, managed to remove this all, kan? And we were also yeah. talking about how, like, it's going to take a while for this to yep. really much yep. slow down, kan? Yeah. Uh, so, um, I mean, vaccine, vaccine is one one way to ease the situation, but it's not like a magic pill that, you know, suddenly everything is back to normal. But, uh, yeah, we I agree with you in a way we need to be more, you know, responsive to that. We cannot just sit and wait. We have to do something about it as well. Uh, uh, we can't be hoping for government to keep on pushing uh, more initiative, but from our end, we, sh we should also, you know, come up with our own action in, in, in easing this uh, impact of pandemic, right? Mm, true, true. And talking about action, I've been seeing like a lot of people who were retrenched, you know, moving into social entrepreneurship. And this is one of the, I, I would say like one of the opportunities that arise during uh, this whole pandemic situation, people are starting to realize like how important it is to help other people and to yeah. create business that would actually impact someone else's yeah. life, especially at times like this, because everyone's going through a hard time and everyone understands each other better now, right? In a way. So, yeah. um, you know, uh, like I would like to know, you know, like for those who are, you know, currently still working, you know, uh, and to those who are considering to become an entrepreneur or to those who have yet to work at all, you know, what mm. are the criteria like in, in your case to consider before someone becomes an employee or an entrepreneur before they take the leap of faith? I have to give a disclaimer first, you know, I'm not a career coach in a way, <laughs> but I do, I do have a lot of, uh, you know, fresh graduate to be more motivated in seeking for employment and all that. But I have this kind of like a 4C kind of uh, 
approach in in evaluating yourself whether or not you should be uh, starting your own business or, and become an entrepreneur or uh, maybe uh, maybe you know you are better off uh, being employed first and then slowly going into entrepreneurship or maybe you can do both at the same time depending on how how would you be able to rate yourself within this 4c continuum lah there is like uh, you know a scale that you can measure yourself uh, it's not like an absolute scale but it's something that i refer to so the 4c the first one is always uh, i call it as commitment right and commitment comes in two views the first one is of course your commitment to whatever you have you know your baggages you know your family uh, maybe your loans you know some some of us by the time you graduate we have about 20k uh, that in our in our bank account that we have to do you know a lot of things uh, some yeah. might might have been uh you know buying cars you know all these loans and all that those are your commitment right that's one so you have to weigh in into how can you cope with this kind of commitment and then the other one is your own commitment to towards that cause that you are doing whether it's social enterprise you know if you are into helping others to achieve their goals then how how much can you commit you know you have to be really clear about this you don't want to be agreeing on something but you can't commit uh, or you are putting in uh, you know very minimal effort to something that you are supposed to be committing more you know things like that so commitment comes in both ways your baggages that you hold on to how much can you sacrifice you know how much can you let go and then commitment from your end how much you can put in so what what to let go what to put in so you, this one has to be very very clear if you can't if you can't evaluate yourself from this this perspective then you 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 know let's say you can't let go a lot of things you know you have, you you can't afford to take more loan to start a business and all that then you might want to consider empl- being an employed person first you know just to gain the experience again gain some income and then then you you proceed to entrepreneurship maybe or you can do both if you want to depending on how then another one of course is courage this is really really critical as you can see like uh, for you who are really really into entrepreneurship doesn't matter whether it's social enterprise or what not this one is the critical element right in a lot of uh, youth like if you don't have the courage to try or to take risks well you know maybe you are better off being a, 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 an employee first right mm-hmm. and before once you're comfortable then you can proceed to become an entrepreneur i think a lot of people are like that you know they they become an employee first and then once they get the confidence once they get the skill set they will move on to become an entrepreneur uh people like you know elon musk mark zuckerberg or even jack ma they they start off you know wanting to be kind of like getting some income first or some some money or capital uh, as, uh, to to kick start their project and and then they they jump into that kind of uh the risk of becoming an entrepreneur uh like elon musk actually if you read his story he started that that first company zip2 mainly because he sent a resume to netscape i would i remember and it, it was rejected netscape didn't want to hire him so he end up being you know open up a new company himself so you need to take that courage to to take that leap right then the third c is consistency <laughs> you have to be consistent you cannot be like to, 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 today i wake up i want to be entrepreneur in business a tomorrow i want to <laughs> go into business b and then after that i want to be in this because you you've been listening to a lot of people and then you you're not consistent in your in your pursuit right you have to be very disciplined and consistent and consistency means you are giving your best at the same time and also it leads to adaptability because if you are not consistent in doing something you cannot adapt to to a lot of things because you let go very fast right mm-hmm. once you're consistent in something right you become adapted to that situation or that 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 skill or whatever you whatever it is you become very adaptable and mm-hmm. because you're consistently improving yourself you're consistent, consistently being in that environment and uh, it helps you to develop that the adaptability and we know people who can survive these days are people who can adapt right it's not about mm-hmm. you are, you have the the best cgpa or you have the best skills that is the one who can adapt the most are the one who are surviving right this is quite critical so if you are the type of person who cannot do that yet you know you might want to see the continuum of being an employee or uh, being a uh, uh, entrepreneur or a boss right mm-hmm. so the last one is always capital i think this is this is this is no brainer in a way if you don't have the capital you can't start a business you don't want to end up you know uh, getting a lot of loan but then you know you're not you're not helping in terms of building your own business and things like that so yeah i, I would say you you might want to consider this 4c 
depending on your skill and skill in as in like how if you if you can give more and all that then you decide whether uh, entrepreneurship is better for you or, or or employment is better for you but personally i would suggest you to be to 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 probably try because uh, you've uh, like like you all now you know are, are, are quite flexible in getting the opportunity to be to be to be trying a lot of things can uh, uh you know like like people say you're still young you know you can try you know, don't know harm you know you can jump into like what like what you did before you you, you start started something and then it didn't work out no harm then you join uh, learn something you know take an internship for two years or one year and then get get the hang of it and then restart you know no harm uh, you are you are not at risk of uh, losing a lot of things yet. But once right. you reach like thirty or mid thirty or forty, then maybe you have to be more stable in, in that sense. So you can't really take a lot of risk. But like as as the saying goes, age is just a number. So even if you have the passion to start entrepreneurship at a later age, no harm. But while you if you're young, then you know you have even more time to to try. Right. So those four C's that I can see. And in terms of startup, SMEs or corporates, I think again, uh, all these are just fancy terms for me. Um, <laughs> even if it's a small business, you can or small enterprise, you can call it a startup or social enterprise. If you put more emphasis on the social part of it, the impact of the social part of it, then I mean it doesn't really matter as long as you are clear on what you want to do, right? Um, the branding or whether it's a startup, whether it's an enterprise, whether it's a company, it, that that comes later in a way. Uh, whatever you want to call yourself what uh, what you need to be clear of is what are you doing right in, in for your business if you want to sell uh what laksa sarawak for example be a get a good damn you know <laughs> damn good laksa sarawak seller you know you don't you don't just you know on pada alang alang you know just sell one two days and then stop one two days stop you know you can't be like that in in order to be an entrepreneur yeah Agreed, agreed. And, and uh, I, I really like the fact that you also talk about, you know, like how the younger generation has more, in a way, like we're, we're cushioned, you know, like we are living in that age whereby yeah. like if we make mistakes, you know, we still have something to fall back to. There's insurance, you know, in a way you have father, mother and some True. people, you know, like have other family members. But I do True. understand there are people out there who have no choice. But yeah. uh, to those with choice app option, you can always try it out. Um, it hurts a bit, uh, yep. but it will actually like give you that experience that you might need moving forward. And and uh, I like the fact that you also mentioned about when you are like moving into your thirties. I believe yeah. that's when the R comes in, the C C C C, the F R responsibility, right? So yeah. whenever you want to start something, you always have to look back at responsibility. Then baru you masuk the lot, eh? See, apa yeah. macam C C C? It's okay, you know. Like now you have responsibility, your wife. The kids, yes. <laughs> what they Actually, that, that goes that goes under commitment as well. We, ah. Meaning to say, when you're young, your commitment is slightly easier to let go. But when you're older, mm-hmm. your commitment is harder to let go. <laughs> Especially ah, when you know you you age, and then your parents also age. It's very hard to let go. You know. Understand, uh, yeah. ah, understand, and. But it, uh, it's responsibility in a way, yeah. <laughs> true, true, yeah. Just that it gets bigger, lah. If all of yep. it is a circle, right? So, yeah. um. So to those who just tuned in, uh, welcome again to our Hashtag Innovate Sarawak speaker series. And today we have Mr. Chua Kiman. And we're talking about something very interesting, in my opinion, of which is, should you become an employee or an entrepreneur? So a lot of people have this question in mind. And if you think that, you know, you don't want to think alone, then please do leave a question or how many questions as you'd like. So we'll try to answer as much as we can after this session. So we do have a couple of questions to go. So if kita want to know what uh, or macam mau tanya tips ke apa, uh, Mr. Chua is very famous to, uh, amongst his students to actually like share tips and all these things. Uh, so just tanya, kita akan uh, jawab sebentar lagi. Uh, and um, uh, in uh, eh, also at the same time, uh, to those who are interested, uh, especially students lah, kami orang baru launch this program called Youth Founder Mentoring Program that we're running together with Free Actor School. So we're actually yeah. actively sharing this on our Facebook uh, page since uh, earlier this week. So it's basically a program that's open to all Sarawakian students uh, from Institute of Higher Learning, fresh graduates and even early stage startups with at least one Sarawakian co-founder. So um, to those who are interested to apply, uh, I believe like my team is going to put the link on the comment section later. So just apply ja. Uh, asalkan kita orang orang Sarawak or at least ada seorang orang Sarawak pun boleh. Uh, macam Mr. Chua tau mungkin kinet mesinnya macam aduh. Like, 
uh, kena nasi tu. <laughs> you know? uh, so uh, so all for this. <laughs> yeah, so Mr. Chua has been a great advocate for like uh, startup uh, movement yeah. uh, within the university, and I think you've been involved in a lot of programs macam like startup weekend, apa semua tu. Nah, startup yeah, yeah. grinds as well, kan? Yeah, yeah. So um, maybe like a bit of your opinion, you know, from uh, a lecturer's perspective, because I believe like a lot of students have also been like going to you asking yeah. for opinions on yeah. maybe like how, you know, like in a way like if suddenly a student were to uh, come up to you, you know, what would yeah. be your uh, opinion on how they should react to the volatile job market? Like what should they do or what should they not do? Um, I think, you know, I, I normally get a lot of fresh graduate coming to me and say like, you know, I, I, I've been, uh, I, I just graduated for like uh, a month, some even six months. Uh, I mean, more than that as well. You know, I, I've been looking for job, but I couldn't. I've been hunting around and all that. So my 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 first question will always be, uh, where did you find, you know, or how did you find your employment and all that? Because sometimes if you if you open up your mind a bit and try to list out all the strategies that you have taken and try to talk to people, right, and then ask people, you know, I've been trying this, I've been putting my resume up on, you know, various job portals. I've been marketing myself on LinkedIn, but people just don't notice me. Maybe, you know, if like, like, like the, the, the saying goes, right, if you have been trying something and it didn't work out, maybe you have to try different in a way, something is not right with that. And then you get, you know, you get to talk to me and then I can get to see your things and then I can kind of like maybe advise or maybe ask anyone, you know, who are already in the job market, they can probably advise you. But the first thing that I really, really encourage a fresh graduate to do is to really take time to reflect on their skill sets, not your CGPA, not not the courses that you get A or whatever, but what are, re you know, what are the really critical things that you have learned throughout your three or four years in universities or maybe outside of universities, list, it, list them out and try to search through on you know all these portals are these skills get uh, skill sets being you know being hunted or being looked for you know like uh, for example you are good in drawing for example you can do a quick check on linkedin or even any job portal whether drawing is a skill set that people are hunting for right mm -hmm. and if you if you have this kind of perspective of listing your your whatever skill you have and then you compare with the job market then you realize maybe uh, the job market is not really uh, accommodating uh, your skill set. It means like maybe drawing at this time is not really something in that the, the job market would be wanting to take. And, um, you know, then it means you might want to really look at your skill set, go for reskilling, go for upskilling courses, training that is offered by a lot of people now. And most of it are free. And then you can even take courses online that can improve your skill set. Maybe now people are not looking for drawing, but they want people who can use Adobe Illustrator, for example. Then you go into Adobe Illustrator skill, improve yourself in that area, and then start hunting for that path, if that is your passion, right? You can't be keep on hoping that the market will fit into your skill set. That's quite ridiculous in these days, in a way, lah, because the market will not change their demand based on you you have to adapt to the market demand that that is what a lot of people don't understand like in my case uh, you know even though I'm, I'm lecturing if i'm comfortable with what i'm doing now just lecturing in universities that i do not I, do, I don't have to be bothered about what's happening around me actually in a way i just have to be bothered about how i can improve the syllabus the curriculum and all that but if I'm out there, then I have to learn a lot. You know, I have to learn how to do marketing. I have to learn how to do copywriting. This, you know, a lot of things. And I have learned a lot and I pick up the skills every, you know, every year I have, I have more skill set added to my, you know, my list, right? So this is something that I think a lot of fresh graduates should, should really, really consider. You cannot just hold on to the skill set that you believe, you know, will be, will be with you forever. That it, it, it just doesn't work now, you know, uh, but in certain field i know like a uh, very specialized field like engineering maybe you have you know you are trained to be a civil engineer and all that you can't be suddenly jumping into a different field like a totally different field if your passion is to be a civil engineer that requires a different uh, strategy in terms of looking for potential uh, placement or potential uh, you know potential uh, employment but one way is you must have that goal right and that goal may not be uh, long term you don't have to be bothered about where do you see yourself in five years? That kind of question. Mm -hmm. It's like, where do you see yourself now? All right. Where do you see yourself yet tomorrow? 
and then next month and all that be set for 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 fresh graduate you need to set a slightly shorter you know uh, uh, kind of goal first and once you get the first job maybe you can think about what happens in the next five years and all that unless of course you are hoping to build a career out of it that would be a different case but I think looking at the con current condition with a lot of uh, unemployment, you just have to be setting a goal. Like now, I I need to hunt, you know, or I, okay, I I did, I search through LinkedIn. I am lacking in these skills, right? I need to spend like three months for this first. Then after three months, I'm gonna hunt for this job. For example, I have a target. I want to be in this company, or I want to be in this uh, area. Another one is go into you know all this we call it gig economy, a fancy word for freelancing kind of thing. No, just go into it because um, there are so many platforms now. If you go and Google up freelancing, there's so many platforms. Sell your skill set, get paid to learn in a way. People pay you to 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 do some freelance job, with, whether you know whether it's a short term contract or maybe one off thing. Just do it because from there you know how to deal with clients. You know how to deal with uh, yourself. You know how how confident are you with dealing with all this demand by your client, things like that. Even if you're not happy with the client, you know you just have to learn because these are the process of learning. If you just sit still and then waiting for a job to come, then it you know it's gonna take some time, right? And of course, the the one that a lot of people will tell you is to create a uh, connection, right? You have to connect with people. Like what you're doing now, uh, Intergas and all that, it, it provides you opportunity to get to know a lot of people, right? Uh, get to know a lot of, uh, 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 you know, you build relationship with people and then people might offer you a job without you knowing in a way, you know? Like I was telling my, my, my students, even if you're doing things sometimes for free uh, or, or you're helping out for you know volunteering at first because you're so good at it people might offer you a, a job without you knowing so bottom line go out there you know get get into some mode of doing something rather than uh, you know sitting at home and waiting for the job to come just get get out you know even even if you have graduated you can always apply for internship again uh, go for for a short internship just to get the hang of what you really really want and and then slowly build but i think gig economy like freelancing is one way to train yourself to be to be more equipped uh, equipped with the job market yeah okay so um and, uh, <laughs> yeah it, it really does and and i myself like in a way to those who have just tuned in is a fresh graduate and like uh, for me you know i've been active in volunteering and it's something that uh, I can really resonate with uh, Mr. Chua and I believe like, um, you know, as students nowadays, like because we are graduating or we are currently learning and studying in a very, uh, you know, like unprecedented time, you know, nothing like this yeah. has ever happened since like I think the early 1900s where we have like all the True. black fever, all these things. So back then it's understandable, you know, like when you don't get a job uh, because there's no such thing as LinkedIn, all these things for you to refer to. But nowadays, you know, like you can always connect and new, recently yep. we have like clubhouse like making connections yeah. as easy as loading an app yeah so, yeah so it's crazy you know like how we yeah. like how the whole scene has changed as opposed to like in fact 20 years ago when people True. were still searching for jobs in uh, newspapers right yes 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 and then um like uh can i can i please share because mr chua has been uh doing like some sharing on his uh website and maybe like to those who would like to connect with him like is it okay if i share your um yeah, sure. your website okay so i'm just gonna pop it up real quick so to those who are interested to know more about like what mr Chua is doing currently or even like to see what are the resources because he's been sharing a lot and i believe that's this board that you are yeah. sharing like video conferencing tool and all this so maybe you can talk a bit about your website a bit Oh yeah, that, that 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 is my kind of like uh, e portfolio or e portfolio, you know, like a portfolio of things that I do, you know. Uh, so mm. if you go to that link, you get you get access to my list of e-learning tools, as well as link to my YouTube channel and some articles that I've written and and all that. But uh, because I'm in in e-learning, so most of the things that I share are about e-learning and education technology. But occasionally, I do share about. Uh, uh, you know, employment and all that, uh, career tips and all that. I'm not really expert, like you know, all those experts that you found, uh, you can find in uh, in in LinkedIn. But I do share, like you know, if you go to, if you just Google up like my name and uh, resume template, I think that that garnered about you know quite hundred thousand views for for the the resume tips and all that, uh, and even interview tips. 
uh, things like that. So I, I occasionally share this kind of thing. But if you if you need more help, I think you can always find more expert in LinkedIn. There's so many people giving free talks now. Uh, this is a good thing about COVID actually, because previously you you can't even. I don't think you can afford to pay them, right? These people mm -hmm. they are quite expensive. But uh, now because of pandemic, they're offering it for free through LinkedIn and like, jump in, listen, see what they're having, to, uh, what they have to say. That's why I kept telling my, my even my fresh graduate or even students, I, I kept telling them, this is the time for you to really learn a lot of things. Don't don't just sit still waiting at home watching K-drama or Netflix alone. <laughs> but allocate a bit of time, like one hour, just go jump into LinkedIn or even YouTube, go for people like Gary V, you know, these people, they, they will mm -hmm. give you a lot of tips about career and then learn, you know, what are the trends in in, in the job market now you can't be holding your mind like I'm, i just graduated i have a degree and i want my i want my uh, uh, uh you know my bosses or my employer to find me <laughs> it, it doesn't it, it doesn't work that way now you know last time maybe because uh, not many people are in the job market but now i think you can't you know you just have to stand out that's the that's the point you know being sent out like this is why i think a lot of people are jumping into tiktok you know youtube and all that because it makes you stand out and you know, you got hired by putting things on TikTok more than you send in resume, maybe, right? You can send like hundreds of resume, you never get hired, but suddenly you, you make a TikTok, people hire you, you know, because of that, you know, things like that. So just keep a positive mind, you know, just put yourself up, uh, sell your skill sets and uh, you never know, right? True. And, and since we're at this topic, like maybe could you share like um, some of the most encouraging things that you have seen, you know, aside from yeah. all these like uh, experts sharing you know there might be more than that now so uh, maybe like from what you've seen so far like what are the other things that has been encouraging what i noticed is the openness um openness in terms of accepting more creative ideas um, uh, due to the new normal uh, especially if, you know from from content creation to even marketing strategies you can see you know all this openness in terms of uh, more businesses trying out new new strategies or marketing the products or, or, or even uh, fresh graduates selling a skill set like i told you last time you depend only on your resume or even e for portfolio and all that now you have more more things to to use right and um in a way that the pandemic has had made more you know the acceptance of creativity uh, slightly widened in a way uh, maybe traditionally uh, pre covid people are still hold on to that typical strategies of doing things but because of covid like now what you're doing you know uh, doing exploring stream yard on how to how to stream this <laughs> online things like that so yeah i mean uh, that's that that's one thing which is quite positive about uh, uh, COVID in terms of the openness to accept new ideas. But uh, also, I think the effort by fresh graduates, I, I can see uh, more and more are trying out. They they are not like like my, my time. We really have to just, you know, circle through, you know, like browse through the newspaper or even browse through uh, jobstreet.com and all these all this portals to find job. But now I think you have more channels. You don't. You don't. You don't, maybe you can find job even on Twitter or even on Facebook these days, right? You just just so happen you you saw some some people tweeted something and then you you share your knowledge and skill set and people you know are interested to know you more. Things have changed a lot and um, yeah uh, and and you get access to uh, not only the experts but also tools, more tools helping you to do resume to. To cope with a job interview like i like i told my students if you tell me now that you have no idea how to face an interview means you're not you're not digging youtube you're not digging TikTok and all that because this this platform they give you so many tips on how to cope with uh job interviews right and uh and they even give you access to uh personal coaching for free right uh yeah so i think it's quite interesting to see how things have changed for, for just in a short time of one year due to this uh, COVID-19. <laughs> agreed, agreed. And, and I think it's something that we talked about before, you know, like COVID-19 is definitely the chief technical officer of the world. Right. You know, it's innovating <laughs> without us realizing. Yeah, yeah. A lot of companies, institutions, like even universities are spending more time thinking about their technology, whether they need to upgrade or not because of this uh, COVID-19. Prior to that, maybe they can say, oh, we can hold on for another five years. And now they can, no, 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 we need to upgrade now. You know, things like that. Yeah. Agreed, agreed. And, and uh, since we're at this topic right now, you know, about change, you know, like maybe if there's uh, people who'd like to know more about like who'd like to change you know who have questions about like how what should i do to change you know just 
ask any questions on the comment section, appropriate questions, of course. Uh, it can be relevant, it can be not relevant, it's okay. Uh, so feel free, tanya aja apa-apa soalan, kami akan jawab. Uh, we do have a couple of questions down there in the comment section. I think my colleague is going to push it up real quick. But before we uh, jump into the Q&A session, I would like to share again about our upcoming Youth Founder Mentoring Program, uh, which is going to be open real soon. Uh, I mean, it is open, but it's going to uh, be uh, basically launched really soon. So it's open to all Sarawakian students, uh, be it inside or outside of Sarawak again. Uh, in Institute of Higher Learning, fresh graduates and early stage startups with at least one Sarawakian co-founder. So uh, I believe like it's for those who are in between 35 and uh, eight, 17. So to apply, visit uh, the link that I'm showing down below. Like it's bit.ly slash YFMP 2021. Application closes on the 21st of March. So again, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chua, for uh, answering my questions. Uh, so yep. now is the time for us to bring the questions in from the floor. I believe like there's quite a number of questions, uh, uh, students' questions, especially who are very like keen to know more about these things. So I believe some of them are your students, I think. Yeah. So first one comes yeah. from Jasmine and her question is, hi, Mr. Chua. How do you feel about the development, involvement of the tech industry and technology, speci specifically in Malaysia and Southeast Asia? Wow, that's a that's a big question for me. Um, <laughs> but if you if you're asking my honest opinion, I think uh, well around the Southeast Asian region, you can see Indonesia uh, rising very fast in this in this area. I have a lot of friends who are into uh, tech startup as well, and you can see how they, they, they were commenting about uh, the ecosystem in Malaysia. Well, we, I think we are still slightly behind, maybe far behind, I'm not sure, but basically we're behind uh, in, in terms of uh, startup, startup uh, initiative. Uh, we have a lot of budding ideas and not a lot of ideas, but somehow uh, things are a bit slower uh, in pushing or uh, being a catalyst of pushing all these people. Uh, um, but I think slowly we, we're going we're gonna to be better because of, uh, you know, uh, things that have been uh, outlined, especially in the new blueprint, the uh, My Digital Blueprint, if you have read it. Uh, of course, it's the same old, maybe some people will say it's the same old, same old kind of uh, blueprint. But to me, at least it, it shows that we are putting more effort to, to address the issues and the concern by the uh, tech startup uh, uh, ecosystem and even those who are involved in tech startup in, in Malaysia. But we can't afford to be too behind actually you know you look at vietnam you look at uh you look at indonesia you look at even i mean don't mention singapore but uh just look at indonesia and vietnam then you will see how they have evolved uh, we are still playing catching up you know uh, like infrastructure for example if you want to do something you look at uh the internet coverage even though you promise certain bit rate and all that but you never reach that bit rate for example these are issues that i think it's, it's small small issues but it has to be addressed if you can't address all these small short, small issues, then you can't go for the bigger one, you know, in, in, in dealing with bigger ones. Yeah. All right. So I hope that answers Jasmine's question. So let's see the next question. So this is from Colin Esterali. Oh. I'm a fresh grad, uh, but I'm struggling to find employment now and I don't have capital to start a business. What do you suggest for people like me to do in the meantime? Yeah, like I said just now, uh, list out your skill set, what are you really, really good at, regardless of what degree you have, you know, you can have a degree in A, but if your skill set are B, no, it doesn't matter. And jump into all this networking, you know, like Tegas, uh, whatever Tegas is doing, go into platform that put yourself in an environment where you are with the like-minded people. You are, you don't, you don't go and join group which are not relevant to what you want to do it makes you it makes your mind clouded with a lot of bitterness and all kind of all kind of negativity go along with people who are really passionate about what you're doing you get more ideas you become more positive about what you're going to do with your with your path or career path but uh, i do suggest you if you're good in something you know your skill set you might want to start doing freelancing as well get hold of things you, there's so many platforms now like uh, fiverr have you heard of that uh f i e f f i v e r r fiverr yeah. uh it's quite quite a lot of if you look if you go there there are a lot of indonesian doing all this freelancing and nations are still quite lacking behind so you might want to sell your skill set there you can do anything actually for for the time being 
also uh, being a fresh grad you might still uh, you know struggling with uh, with the ideation or what you want to do so trying out different things would, would be helpful you know uh, in my case for example when i when i initially graduated, even though my degree is in education i was supposed to be a teacher but i ended up in journalism first you know i, I worked for a while in, uh, as a journalist and edit, editor so i learned how to cope with different scheduling and tasks and all that i you know i stayed out even until 4 a.m. at 6 a.m. just to cover a news piece and all that things like that. But you, if you just stay, stay stay static at home, you know, you you are clouded with a lot of things, with a lot of negativity. You have to go out. I mean, right now it's MCO. You can't really go out as in go out. But what I mean is you have to spend more time looking for like-minded people. Train your mind to be into that environment. If you want to do A, go and mix. Like like there's there's a saying like you are an average of the five people that you are close with. Right, that kind of that kind of quote, where if you mix yourself with the five people who are close to you, you are the average of those five. So if you mix with those who are not really doing anything, you might end up do, not doing anything as well. So if you want to push yourself, mix mix around with people who can push you, and like what Hamza mentioned, you know, I I notice a lot of uh, negative comments on Clubhouse app as well. A lot of people don't realize that that is still a beta stage. Uh, it's not. It's not. It's not exclusive for iPhone. Actually, they are just testing out on iPhone. Sooner or later, they will open up for Android and all that. So that platform, I notice because they are leveraging on a drop-in kind of thing. You get in touch with a lot of like, professional. I know you get to talk to a lot of people who are in that same mind. So join and then talk to people. If you even if you don't want to talk, you can listen. I myself, you know, for, for the past two weeks, I learned so much from the, that app because, you know, there, there are things I don't know. And you know, then when I go into like EduTech uh, Asia, that 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 club chat room, mm. wow, I, I, I'm amazed. Like like I told you, I mean, I'm amazed what is happening in Indonesia, even though people say uh, Indonesia is not coping well with COVID-19, but there are a lot of ideation coming from there, things like that. So you mix around with like-minded people, get hold of it. and But most importantly, you need to know what you're good at. You know, if you're still blur about that, Again, all these people you are mingling around will tell you, you know, oh man, you're so good at this. Take that down. Okay, I'm good at this. If you're good in makan, then it's a different case. <laughs> but but maybe if you're good at makan, you can start a channel about, you know, I, I saw a few of my students starting a channel on eating, you know, eating, just eating. And then they, they, they start to build their interest of uh, creating content and all that. All right. Okay, right. I think that's a really uh, good answer. It's another elaboration of what yeah, uh, we were talking about, right? And uh, I believe like nowadays, like sky's a limit because uh, yeah. a lot of people are now doing things that we never knew can actually give money, you know, ASMR, la, like on TikTok, la, just like doing, yeah. uh, you know, like just staring at the screen also can earn you like yeah. revenue. TikTok, so, I think if you use it wisely, apart from dancing, you know, just release your stress, it's fine. But do spend some time to create some content which which highlight your skill set. You know, you know, like like I saw some who are really good in uh, photoshopping. They just do a tutorial on photoshop photoshopping skills on TikTok, and then you know, people might notice it and then start start noticing you. And all these media agency might just drop you in. You know, and be a, be their graphic designer. For, for all you know, you may be a, a civil engineering graduate, but you end up having a job as a graphic designer first. You know, that's a good start, at least, you know. True, true, true. So um, let's answer a few more questions. We have like yeah, a sure. couple more. Um, I yeah. think for No Fahada, let's combine it with the question after this yeah. for, uh, by Jadira. Let's let's link it both together. So um, No Fahada basically is asking about like, what's the first step for me to become an entrepreneur? I believe like that's a very like generic question, uh, like like there's a lot of first steps out there, but let's look into the second question. Um, is it possible to run a business while being a student? You know, what are your opinions? You did mention about this, so I guess like uh, this is taking responsibility to that question. <laughs> you can, as long as you know how to balance it. Again, the, the, the four C I mentioned just now, how much can you commit? How much can you, you know, how much can you uh, let go and all that? If you know how to uh, be disciplined, be consistent. I think you can. In fact, when I was when I was uh, studying, uh, I I do a lot of freelancing work. Uh, I do websites. I help people uh, write articles, uh, things like that. So it's it's also a source of. Unless you're talking about selling things, uh, like selling products and all that. But if you are doing like, I think a lot of a lot of students these days are also doing dropship. Uh, you know, uh, uh, business. You know, or even being agent of some product. No harm. As long as you can cope with both, and then you don't start to blame either side. You know, you don't blame the study for not 
for not being able to cope with the business. You don't blame your business for not being able to cope with your study. Don't do that because it's not really going to help you to, to progress. Again, if you know that it's a bit overwhelming, don't overcommit and then just let go of some part of it. Like like sometimes if you have a lot of demand, then you might want to tell people, okay, look, I cannot I cannot cope with the orders now. So I have to reduce my orders, for example, things like that. So you just have to learn. No harm. I think it's a good way. In fact, uh, I wouldn't say it's the, the, the way to go, but uh i do hope that you learn how to plan your time wisely before you you know really really think about uh balancing but i think it's a good side income like people say what's the in thing now the side hustle right the term yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right so um i think it's something that's relevant to this question as well like a, a question yeah. that Raven is asking um like this person does not have experience at all uh in yeah. doing business so he's asking like where mm -hmm. should he look so with the gas. You, you should join the <laughs> program you should join the program that's a good way to start but start 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 doing some research research actually not 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 like you know the research research but start reading up on uh, doing things um, but do not fall into the trap of getting rich fast i think a lot of youth these days they they are obsessed with got getting rich very fast they fall into the trap I, I know a lot of you uh, ended up uh, in debt because of uh, some people got scammed for crypto, cryptocurrencies, you know, listening to Bitcoin rising and everyone jumped into the bandwagon and everyone collapsed because you're still you're still unable to to cope with that yet. But um, but I do suggest if you have no experience, the first thing to do is to gain that experience. So you cannot keep on saying I have no experience all the time. You have to find and gain the experience by uh you know reading up first and then join program join activities related ones and then start start you have to start you know start something start start like i said again freelancing is a is a, why do i keep saying gig economy or you know or freelancing because it's a low risk thing you know you don't lose anything you are just selling your skill you, you don't even need to pump any capital well maybe you need to pump a bit of money in terms of subscribing to maybe some 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 tool but it's very minimal and very low risk Imagine, let's say, you know, uh, let's say last time when I was studying, I do a website. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I could learn the thing freely on YouTube, uh, learn how to how to build a website, blah, blah, blah. And then I have a company I can charge, like maybe that time, maybe, uh, you know, 800 to 1K kind of thing. You know, you, you, you don't even have to pump anything. You know, basically you get 800 and 1K, things like that. Then you learn how to deal with client. Actually, that's the most critical thing because when we don't start, we don't know how to deal with them. And then now, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of issues about communication skills because you have no experience dealing with clients, dealing with customers. So so you don't know how to talk to people. But once you are into that, put yourself like like I told you just now, the second, the third C courage, take that risk, you know, take that leap to do it. And then you will be able to experience it. Then you will know whether you are you are supposed to be in that business or not. Right. Right, so uh, I hope that answers uh, your question, uh, Raven. And uh, let's answer like two questions together, okay. uh, since we do have quite a lot of questions. So I think this is quite sure. relevant to each other. So the first one is sure. from Angelina. Question is like, what kind of startup are in high demand now? And we have another question from Jasmine, and her question. I think this is very interesting. Uh, right. So uh, yeah, shout out to that. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mesmin's question is uh if you were to become an entrepreneur, which sector will you explore in? So it's something like quite relevant, lah. Like like if you're like would you explore in the high demand startup uh punya benda or like what kind of sector will you be in? Actually I'm 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 already involved with uh, several startups and I, I personally have one which is focusing more on social entrepreneurship and um like the one you said, all this uh, laptop thingy and all that is part of that social enterprise. Where, but I don't really, I'm not really an all-in person because I have my commitment with my 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 job as a lecturer and all that. But the the social enterprise is mainly to generate enough to give back. So so uh, a lot of things are, uh, but but it's related to what I'm doing, which is e-learning and education technology and all that. So, uh, you know, uh, doing doing a lot of. Uh, project you know building apps and all that for example uh, but mainly just to earn enough to to give back so i'm not really into that but if if i were to become in like a full one you know uh i would still go into uh, education in a way so i would probably I, ha I had a dream of starting my own way of running a school so i don't know when i'm gonna achieve that but hopefully one day um 
before I die, <laughs> at least I get to do it, you know, like it's not a school, but I, but you know, it's a concept of school, but I have something I have in mind, uh, but a, a slightly different way of running how education should work, you know, with, with, mm. with some ideas that I have, but I cannot reveal it now. Lah, all right. And then <laughs> the question just now, the other one was, what kind of startup are in, in high demand now? Oh, this one, I, I don't know how to answer this. You're talking about if Malaysia, I, um, high demand now, I think anything to do with, uh, maybe the data science, I think quite, quite on high demand because we are lacking of talent actually in this area. Uh, if you find any companies when they're looking for data scientists and all that, or even those who are doing analytics, uh, quite lacking. Even uh, AI, of course, right? But we are still, still like I said, lacking behind, but it's a, it's, a, it's the in thing to go, like, you know, AI, uh, data science and all this. But at the same time, I think if you're looking at the condition in Malaysia, uh, social enterprise is getting on high demand. But what I see is a lot of social enterprise model running in Malaysia are still pretty much more like an NGO rather than a social enterprise. Because if you if you hold on to social enterprise uh, principle, you need to really learn how to generate enough to give back like 51% of whatever you earn, you know, the profit should be for the for the community or for the people that you're impacting. Um, not, not like giving back as in giving them money only, but you are giving back in terms of training them to be become more equipped with the skill set and all that. Like a lot of social enterprises are doing in Malaysia now. Uh, but of course, I do see some some social enterprise who are still de de depending on grants, which are not really sustainable because that, that grant will, will deplete sooner or later. But you need to find out ways to generate enough income for you to sustain at the same time to, to be able to give back to the community. So yeah, I think that will be on high demand in a way. A lot of people are looking for it. But if you are talking about earning big bucks, you know, out of that, I, I, I can't really answer that because, you know, it, it really depends on a lot of factors. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Hope that answers uh, Angelina's question. So we're gonna get like one more question, sure. like from the crowd. We do have like a lot of questions, but uh, one night is not enough. It needs to yeah, be like yeah. a lot of nights because uh, I understand like because um, a lot of these um, you know attendees that we have today, viewers right now, um, you know like they know that you're an educator, so that's why they're like yeah. okay, like let's ask questions. Okay, so our final question for tonight um, from Jasmine as well. So have you heard of Starlink? It's one of Elon Musk's company, if, if she's not mistaken, yeah. and yeah. Uh, they're aiming to launch a satellite. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? And do you I think, think so it random. will be possible? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you talk to Elon, uh, anything is possible, right? Anything is possible to him. Uh, and uh, one thing I want to highlight about Elon Musk, in a way, a lot of people don't realize, if you listen to him talking, he 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 struggled a lot in in you know in presentation in in speaking uh but his mind is a bit extraordinary so what i'm telling you is if you look even if you look at jack ma you know when when he's trying to convey his his speech his his english is not perfect and his english is like very very china you know kind of kind of influence and all that but you look at their confidence their their, their ability to 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 lay out their plans to to be to be comfortable of uh, doing the uncomfortable things, you know, uh, taking that risk and all that. I think not everyone can do that, honestly. Uh, not everyone. Even me, if you ask me, I wouldn't be able to take that kind of risk to to invest so much on that uh, if, if I have the money. But of course, obviously, I don't have. But uh, if you're asking me whether it's going to be possible, yeah, you know, you never you never know, right? A lot of things, you know, people people say he couldn't do it, then then suddenly he's doing it. Like SpaceX is one example. People people were talking about it wouldn't work, but then he proved he proved that it works. Things like that. But um, yeah, but how far? I'm not sure, right? But uh, it's good to keep track of his development. He is like the influencer of all these things. Like everyone's listening to him. Suddenly everything is affected by his decision like whenever he <laughs> invested in something and you know, he's, he's going to cause a ripple effect on other things and he, he is also the one behind clubhouse right i think you know the company behind clubhouse is oh. own yeah so a lot of a lot of uh impact now you know he's into open ai and, and all that so yeah that's one example of looking at it but i saw one comment from yiling like web, website price currently they lower it because they don't need website now back then they need Right now, I think if you say a website, uh, you can't really. And that's what that's what I meant by uh, knowing the job market demand. 
right? Mm -hmm. If you know that the they lower you to hundred uh, in in the job, meaning to say a uh, website design alone is not enough now. So you need to pick up other skills like people now. I think are looking at intel, intel intelligent system for website. If you know how to do that, they pay you big bucks. Like all this, if you go to a certain website, they will be able to do filtering and skills. Uh, now, if not the typical WordPress kind of website where you know anyone can do or weak style, and then of course they're gonna they're not gonna pay you high because everyone can do it in in from their perspective. But if you are uh, if you're able to do something which is beyond that, uh, you can sell as much as you as you want. So again, my point is, you cannot be static of what you have learned in your in your university life or whatever skill set you have. You have to constantly check. Even as educator, people people keep asking me. You know, a lot of lecturers ask me, "How do you know all this? So so many things." Because I I told them I have to keep track of what's happening, or else I wouldn't know what to tell people in terms of e-learning. You know, I cannot be a guy talk, claiming myself to be in e-learning but i'm still talking about microsoft front page or <laughs> you know all this old old you know stuff or even old programming like c plus plus which people no longer use or even app development so i have to keep that i may not be good at it but at least i know but things that i'm interested in i will go deeper and then i learn like now i'm into uh i'm, I'm learning about i'm learning more about data science and artificial intelligence because even though uh, it's not part of my job, but I think I'm so interested in, in, in learning how to do machine learning and all that. It's, it's a field that we need to know. So again, it takes more effort now to, to really stand out in the job market. But bottom line is you cannot be comfortable with whatever you, you have to get, get yourself out there, learn the harsh reality of the world and then come back, realize, okay, I need to do this, things like that, okay? All right, so uh, yep. Like, I hope that also answers Yin Ling's concern. Like, if she's currently yeah. looking into the tech <laughs> field, in a way, yeah. like, uh, a good exploration to be in. Lah. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. there's always... Right, a it's a good start. It's always a, like, like, even 300, right? If you do 10, you get 3K. <laughs> that's, the, that's the principle. You need to learn how to find a good client. Yeah, that's what Elon Musk said as well. If people pay you 10, ring, uh, 10 bucks, you know, if you do it mm. 1,000 times, you get 1,000. Uh, sorry, 10,000, right? Things like that. So... It means you don't look at the amount per se, but if you know that you are being underpaid, then don't accept the job. You know, don't accept the job. No. If you know you're underpaid, then don't accept that that that, that job. Okay. Okay. So right. uh, that's an additional one for Yin Ling, and uh, <laughs> somewhere lah. Okay, at the end of the day, it's just yep. about starting rather than yep. like uh, just like okay, like let me see the job market first. You know, like yep. screw it, start it, and then like yep. uh, screw again, and then like start all over again because. Yep. Uh, by exploring like as and even currently as an educator yourself you are also like learning new things and you're, you're picking yeah. up new skills so yep. us as the younger generation and as students as well you know there's no <laughs> for us to not do anything you know especially times True. like this where law yeah. courses are out so um yeah. like before we end today's session like any final advice to our audience out there go out and do it <laughs> because if you keep Keep thinking about it. Overthinking doesn't really help. I think just go. I mean, go out as in really try yourself to venture into something. If you're really good in doing something, just try it out. You know, even selling products or you know, some people say why why do a lot of people go into sales like selling selling insurance, selling what selling kowe or kuku or, you know kuku or whatever. At least that is the start. You know, because you get to know something. But if after you have tried and that it does it, it doesn't really work out well, then you know you you can switch. Bottom line is you have to try first because if you don't try, then you you will never. It would never work right so you really really need to because the world is like you said just now is so volatile you know things can change rapidly you never know what's going to work so uh the only thing you can do is look through search through and deal with it and try to try to cope with this the current needs and you will see yourself stand out a lot and you cannot be static so let's say you graduated now you cannot be you who just graduated you need to think of yourself now i'm employee number one not a fresh graduate anymore. So how am I going to convince my employer that I am the one that they need? So don't keep on hopping on this fresh graduate, fresh. You are no longer fresh. By the time you reach like one week, you're no longer fresh, right? <laughs> because fresh means you're like fresh from the oven kind of thing. One week is no longer fresh. So trick, throw out the word fresh, you know? Get yourself, like always be plus one. I, like I told my student, always be plus one, plus one. This year or this month, I plus one. Oh, I managed to, to learn this, plus one. I managed to learn that, plus one. So in the end of the day, even if you don't get the job that you wanted, um, you go to a smaller company, for example, you get to show off your skill. I mean, show off as in, you know, 
uh, shine and then they would recommend you for another job things like that so i think keep that mindset of keep trying you know the reward will come sooner or later it's just a matter of time you know if you keep trying the consistency has to be there yeah All that's right. my final word <laughs> Okay, awesome. And uh, yeah, just to see, see, to to summarize the whole thing, just do it and keep yep. on trying, you know, and then just do it. It's just that whole circle that you keep on, you know, doing over yep. and over again. And uh, until the day of, and, how comfortable are you with that risk? Like? Because a lot of people, they don't want to try because they don't dare to face that risk, you know. So, uh, yeah, uh, so I have to really, if you're, if you're really, really having that fear, right, even I have that fear as well, talk to people. Talk to people you know talk to talk to the relevant people in your field that you really want to look or maybe the role model that you look up to talk to them you get more ideas more motivation to move forward or else you will be constantly in that fear of not trying okay, okay. all right awesome thank you so much mr chua and no honestly problem, like everyone do it myself i think i'm expired already as you mentioned <laughs> like after what, right? well, tomorrow so... i have a startup from hamza hamza startup <laughs> <laughs> no, like, so... okay. So yeah, like um, just do it, like uh, and and thank you so much for for sharing with yeah, us. One, and, one uh, bit. You 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 all might want to uh, uh join the startup grind Sarawak chapter as well. We, uh, you know, Malcolm and I were doing a lot of uh, we we're gonna plan a few events coming soon with a lot of talk with uh budding, uh, startup entrepreneur from Sarawak and all that. So you get to hear from them how they start you know, from, from zero. Uh, things like that. So do follow us. Just Google up Startup uh, Grind Malaysia. We are also part of the Startup Grind Malaysia, but we, we are based in, in Kuching, of course. So just join us for, for our upcoming uh, talk with all these people. And even if, if you need advice, we have lists of mentors for you to refer to, apart from joining, uh, of course, the GAS uh, uh, initiative and all the programs run by the GAS, which is also very, very, very useful. Please join. <laughs> So I believe like Startup Grind Sarawak, right? The, the, there's yeah. a Facebook page as well called Startup Grind now, Sarawak. Now, now we, we kind of migrated to Startup Grind, Malaysia, uh, Startup Grind Malaysia because we are like taking over the Malaysia chapter, you know, suddenly. Oh. Yeah, we, but okay. but we have two lah in a way, parallel. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So maybe like my colleague will share it in the comment section later. Sure. Uh, and people can just go and, you know, like, there's going to be like sharing and all those things. There's going to be events happening. So uh, maybe eventually they have, might have like a clubhouse program. Kan? You can drop in anytime. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. There so are many running now. Yeah, if you go to uh -huh. Clubhouse, if you have if you have joined Clubhouse, just search for startup. Uh, there's so many uh, chat room, you know, uh, being, being put up. Uh, listen to them. I, I normally just drop in and listen. You'll be amazed uh -huh. with the ideas that you get and, you know, what, what are the skill set that are on demand now, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah like as i said like mr chua is a definite like advocate for startups uh, so yeah. like he's grinding like startup world right now so if you're interested maybe like if you want to know more or if you want to engage even further i believe like there's like a startup grind punya talk sessions yeah. and there's also yeah. like uh, engagement sessions that i think yeah. usually like it was run physically by them because uh, yeah. i used to be very active joining all these things yeah so <laughs> So I uh, do keep out and uh, yep, my colleague has shared it on the link there. So you can just uh, join there on that. I believe like Startup Grind Malaysia as well on Facebook. Uh, so yeah, but you can share. go to the same page, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, awesome. So yep. uh, I believe like that's all the time that we have to, for today's episode of uh, with Sarawak Speaker Series. I'd love to know more. I'd love to share more and also I'd love to talk more with uh, Mr. Chua. But of sure. course, to be fair, <laughs> like, like, it's night and uh, Mr. Chua is a family man, you know, he has other things yeah. to do too. And yeah. um, that's the thing, as you mentioned, like we uh, yeah. nowadays like, we live with work, right? So we're bringing work now. Yeah, you don't work from home, you leave your work. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, like this is for the sake of the community and it's great to have you here, uh, Mr. Chua, and for yeah. sharing with the community. And yeah. uh, on behalf of the guests, uh, we're, we're very glad to have, uh, like, in a way, connect with you. And we hope that in the future, we're going to see each other even more often uh, for yeah. programs like this, more programs. Yeah. So sure. to our audience, uh, as always, join us again next month on the 27th of March. Uh, and of course, like, uh, to keep up with the latest updates and programs by Tegas and our ecosystem partners, don't forget to like our page as shown on the screen right now. I think my, my colleague's going to pop it up real quick later. So. Um, Next month, we'll be having a sharing about social entrepreneurship. So we're going to share the topic real soon. So of course, like uh, like Mr. Chua did touch a bit about it and uh, social entrepreneurship is 
the thing right now. So if you'd like to launch a startup or launch something, so that may be a great talk for you. Yeah. So again, um, uh, talking about uh, role models, we do have a an upcoming mentorship program called YFMP, uh, Youth Founder Mentoring Program that is open to all Sarawakian students uh, in Institute of Higher Learning, fresh graduates and early stage startups with at least one Sarawakian co-founder to apply, visit the link that is being shown on the ticker down below. It's bit.ly slash YFMP 2021. So the application closes on the 21st of March. So uh, again, like I uh, apologize if there's any hiccups and all those things. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chua, no for uh, giving us your time and answering Sorry all the camera glitches. So I'm not sure what happened to no my worries. camera. <laughs> the I think the camera is also glitching because of too much like online, right? So it never thought that it's going to spend yeah. this much time. So yeah. um, honestly, like this has been a very great uh, sharing session. We had like uh, really a lot of people right now like still watching so yeah. um if you have any questions feel free to ask again down below and uh us from tegas maybe like what we can do is we can forward the questions sure. to mr chua and definitely visit his website just now as we shared and startup grind malaysia to find out more about uh the the things that he's been doing all uh now so uh again uh on behalf of the guys thank you so much everyone and uh remember to stay curious and as always stay safe and we'll see you again soon bye bye thank you bye bye